it's me, Graham, and today we are going to have a fun video about the nine intelligences, tooth decay, and butchins. Or should I say cleftions? That's just another way you can say it. So, the nine intelligences. What can I say about that? Well, laggy, lag. Okay, the nine intelligences. So basically, these are just, I guess, kind of ways that people think. And you could be more than one. It's not like you're specifically this intelligence. It's just people think in various ways, and these are just the ways that they are. So, basically, there's many different ones. And it's basically just how people generate, how people process information, and how they like to learn. So, the first intelligence is naturalist intelligence, which is nature smart. Designates the human ability to discriminate among living things, plants, animals, as well as sensitivity to other features of the natu natural world, clouds, rock configurations. This ability was clearly of value in our evolutionary past as hunters, gatherers, and farmers. It continues to be central in such roles as botanist or chef. It is also speculated that much of our consumer society exploits the naturalist intelligences, which can be mobilized in the discrimination among cars, sneakers, kinds of makeup, and the like. So, basically what that means is like, you are really into nature. Like, you really work well around plants and animals. Like, like you want to be with the nature, and that's what helps you learn. To discriminate, like I said, to discriminate among living things which is plants or animals. So if you're with an animal or if you're with a plant and you're with the natural world, that's what helps you learn. So, like, that would probably be one of the things that would help you learn. Let's back up. Okay. Number two is musical intelligence. Musical smart. Musical intelligence is the capacity to discern pitch, rhythm, timbre, and tone. This intelligence enables us to recognize, create, reproduce, and reflect on music, as demonstrated by composers, conductors, musicians, vocalists, and sensitive listeners. Interestingly, there is often an effective connection between music and the emotions, and mathematical and musical intelligences may share common thinking processes. Young adults with this kind of intelligence are usually singing or drumming to themselves, they're usually quite aware of sounds others may miss. So basically, if you are musical intelligence, it means you are very aware of the sounds around you. It also means that you learn best when you're um, basically hearing music. Like say, you might do well in a class where the teacher is talking, but then in the background there's So, you might work better if that maybe that was the class, because you just really like music and it helps you process your thoughts. Okay, next is logical mathematical intelligence, which is number reasoning smart. Logical mathematical intelligence is the ability to calculate, quantify, consider propositions and hypotheses, hypotheses, and carry out complete mathematical operations. It enables us to perceive relationships and connections, and, you, and to use abstract, symbolic thought, sequ se sequential reasoning skills, and inductive and de deductive thinking patterns. Logical intelligence is usually well-developed in mathematicians, scientists, and detectives. Young adults with lots of logical intelligence are interested in patterns, categories, and relationships. They are drawn to arithmetic problems, strategy games, and experiments. So, basically what they mean by that is if you really like doing things step by step and figuring things out, and really using your brain to work out problems and do equations and stuff. Like for instance, if a teacher gave you a problem, you might use your brain because of your mathematical logical intelligence to be like, 
Oh, we could simplify that expression by doing something like this to get the answer. So like, your brain might be very, it's obviously backwards because this is photo booth, so it doesn't really allow you to see things correctly, but it's just maybe like your brain can really decipher things and you want to do like, you really want to use your brain to do kind of like experiments like to find calculations, like really numbers. You love working with numbers, subtracting, adding, just like working things out by deducing and adding and just working things out by numbers, by math and numbers and reasoning. Like reasoning really like, I think what they mean by reasoning is like, you wanna like, and like hypotheses is that you wanna like make a prediction with reasoning that's how they kind of inter intertwine, kind of like in science too, because science is also kind of interlocked with math, like if you're finding the, the volume of a certain liquid and like whatever. Not liquid, but you know. Um, you might have to use water displacement, and that is also combining math. So you're using that hypothesis to make a reasoning for the experiment that might also have numbers in it. Okay. On to the next one, which is existential intelligence, sensitivity and capacity to tackle deep questions about human existence, such as the meaning of life, why do we die, and how do we get here? So basically they're kind of interested in maybe evolution, life, what is it? What is life? Okay, that's just a circle of life. Just to do a little example, I guess, like, they want to know, why are we here? Why They kind of think in a way that's in-depth about existence. Not about maybe music, listening to sounds, or, or thinking in numbers, but really thinking more in-depth, like, why? I think I'm just thinking, like, when you are existential intelligence, you're really thinking, why? Why is that there? Why is this here? How did it become? That really, I think would that be, that would be that intelligent. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. On to number five. The fifth intelligence out of nine. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Ah. Which is interpersonal intelligence. No, interpersonal intelligence, which is people smart. Interpersonal intelligence is the ability to understand and interact effectively with others. It involves effective verbal and nonverbal communication, the ability to note distinctions among others, sensitivity to the moods and temperaments of others, and the ability to entertain multiple perspectives. Teachers, social workers, actors, and politicians all exhibit interpersonal intelligence. Young adults with this kind of intelligence are leader, leaders among their peers, are good at communicating, and seem to understand others' feelings and motives. So if you basically have this intelligence, it means you're be one of the things is you're able to read people. You're really good with people. You know how to interact with them, you know how to communicate with them, and you know how to know how they're feeling. Which is good because, say, in school, and you're this intelligence, you would use that to maybe like talk with people about learning like they said teachers because teachers they talk that's how they teach and it really helps them because if that's how you are then learning you need to talk and you need to not only talk but understand the person who you're talking to to really help you learn and that's how that intelligence will really play out from what i'm thinking okay yeah on to the next one. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, oh, oh. Okay. Now we are on to number six. I haven't really been doing the numbers for each one, but I'm going to start. So six. One, two, three, four, five, three. Okay, which is bodily kinesthetic intelligence, which is body smart. 
Bodily kinesthetic intelligence is the capacity to, manip to manipulate objects and use a variety of physical skills. This intelligence also involves a sense of timing and the perfection of skills through mind-body union. Athletes, dancers, surgeons, and craftspeople exhibit well-developed bodily kinesthetic intelligence. Okay, now deciphering what this that just said. So it basically means you kind of have to be doing something. You have to do something with your body and also maybe your mind and then those two uniting. So maybe in school, you if they're doing maybe an outside activity to learn, you might have to be maybe stretching or something while the teacher talks. Or maybe if it's like an activity, like you're doing maybe like a science relay race where you're running to go get a fact or learn something that might really play into your favor because basically what this means is you can use objects and be physical like be physical use kind of like phys ed you probably do quite good in that subject <laughs> but bodily kinesthetic basically means that you need to be kind of physical and you need to be doing stuff with objects in your body and just do stuff to help you learn. <laughs> Alrighty now. On to the next one, which is linguistic intelligence, which is word smart. Okay. Linguistic intelligence is the ability to think in words and to use language to express and appreciate complex meanings. Linguistic intelligence allows us to understand the order and meaning of words and to apply meta-linguistic meta skills to reflect on our use of language. Linguistic intelligence is the most widely shared human competence and is evident in poets, novelists, journalists, and effective public speakers. Young adults with this kind of intelligence enjoy writing, reading, telling stories, or doing crossword puzzles. So if, you're, if your intelligence, one of your intelligences is linguistic, you are very competent in literary, social, liter, literary areas. Like you can really, you're very, you have a very vast vocabulary, and you can use that to express and learn. And you can also, you're good at re, like reading, and also not really like solving stuff and being or being hands on, but really knowing how to express and learn and teach with words or writing, and really express certain things like novelists and journalists through writing and words. So that is linguistic and Oh, sorry, I'm like spazzing it out. Okay, let's go on to intrapersonal intelligence, which is number eight. We only have one more after this. Intra, intrapersonal, which is self-smart. Intrapersonal intelligence is the capacity to understand oneself and one's thoughts and feelings, and to use such knowledge in planning and direct and directioning one's life. Intrapersonal intelligence involves not only an appreciation of the self, but also the human condition. It is evident in psychologists, spiritual leaders, and philosophers. These young adults may be shy. They are very aware of their own feelings and are self-motivated. So this I see as kind of being introverted, like you're very, you know about yourself. You know, you can understand yourself. It's kind of like the opposite of the, what was it? It was... The opposite of people smart is self smart. You don't interact, you don't really interact with people to learn and talk, but you kind of work with yourself, just you, kind of just contained. You have to be kind of contained for this, which really would work. Just kind of be contained and I'm guessing like they said you're shy, maybe you like read because to absorb everything and contain it. Next, we have spatial intelligence, which is our last one, which is picture smart. Spatial intelligence is the ability to think in three dimensions. One sec. Mia, please be quiet. I'm filming. Okay. She's being kind of a jerk. You probably can't.
can't even hear her as loud as I can. I'll keep going. Okay. Spatial intelligence is picture smart. Spatial intelligence is the ability to think in three dimensions. Core capacities include mental imagery, spatial reasoning, image manipulation, graphic and artistic skills, and an active imagination. Sailors, pilots, sculptors, painters, and architects all exhibit spatial intelligence. Young adults with this kind of intelligence may be fascinated with mazes or jigsaw puzzles or spend free time drawing or daydreaming. So you don't just have to be an artist. I mean, part of spatial intelligence means that you like to draw, to express your intelligence, you like to draw, and you like to be very detailed and exert, and maybe like draw and just, just sketch and paint to show that. But also, it said sailors and pilots could ex exhibit spatial intelligence. So that also means that you're aware of your surroundings and you like kind of like space and you think in three dimensions so you that involve like what's around you. Okay, so we finished all the nine intelligences. So after reading them and me describing them, what I'm thinking, kind of like deciphering them, comment down below what intelligence or intelligences you think suit you the best. Okay. Next, tooth decay, which is which is mostly caused by sugar. Like, if you just have, like, a cup of Coke, don't just drink, chug the whole thing of Coke. Kind of eat that maybe with, like, a cracker or any other hard, solid food to break down that sugar so it doesn't cling to your teeth and force slowly to form plaque. Also, make sure you brush the best when you wake up because when you're asleep at night, there's really no movement. And, like, in the daytime, you're talking and you're eating and you're moving your mouth all day long. And so there's things breaking up the plaque. And But at night, it's 12 whole hours of literally no movement. So that could really cause pla lots of plaque. And then if you soon don't take care of that plaque, tooth decay, which can be quite bad. Okay, so, basically also, when you brush your teeth, you should do it very hard, and also, not only your teeth, but your tongue. It's going up and down a few times, because that is a lot of where some of the plaque can stick onto, and also kind of dirty up your mouth. Examples, um, I'd have to say, are drinks, like... Um, a big thing, a lemonade, Coke, really any drink but milk and water, really anything, any caffeinated drinks are really especially bad, but any really drink with sugar at all is just, can be horrible. And I know you might not think it, but if you also eat a very sugary meal, you should brush your teeth. And I don't really even want to, it's going to be so bad. It's like, oh, I just ate a great meal, I want to go now, go do something, but now I have to go upstairs, brush my teeth, or there's just a little bit. It's good, but I still haven't done it. I'm just telling you guys. Maybe you'll be more, more motivated than me. So, that's kind of like tooth decay. A lot of examples, mostly sugar and also long periods of time without movement in the mouth area. So, hopefully you enjoyed that little bit on tooth decay. I'm trying to move along very fast because this is getting to be a very long video. Butchins. Oh, butchins, don't we all just wonder about you? Wonder about where you came from, what you're all about, and how genetically you've come to be? Well, you're going to find out the answers to that in this few minute segment on butchins. And I'm going to try to make this kind of go fast because we're already at 19 minutes and 15 seconds. Ah! Okay. All right, here we go. The terms cleft chin, chin cleft, dimple chin, chin dimple, or butt chin refer to a dimple on the chin. It's really a dimple. It is a Y-shaped fissure on the chin with an underlying bony peculiarity. The chin fissure follows the fissure in the lower jawbone, resulted from the incomplete fusion on the left and right halves of the jawbone, or muscle during the embryonal and fatal development. 
For other individuals, it can develop over time, often because one half of the jaw is longer than the other, leading to facial as asymmetry. asymmetry. This is an inherited trait in humans where the dominant gene causes the cleft chin while the recessive genotype presents without a cleft. However, it is also a classic example for variable pen penetrance with an environmental factors of a modifier gene possibly affecting the phenotypical expression of the actual genotype. Cleftions are common among people or originating from Europe. Now, but I don't think that's racist. I mean, this is Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. <laughs> Why not to trust about the internet? But that's just a little bit about cleft chins. I thought you might want to know. I've seen many people, and everyone thinks, oh my goodness, they have a butt chin. Well, that's one way to call it, but they can actually be kind of appealing. So you probably should make fun of them because they're not that ugly. But it's just sometimes a part of your body like it kind of as it says forms and it has to do with genes sometimes and again it's also can form and it's really just a dimple on your chin and it's creating also a Y fissure so I'm going to demonstrate a quick one it's kind of like you kind of like that and then like that and if I were to let go it wouldn't be that extreme, but it'd kind of be like that. And that's how it would look. I'm going to talk like this for the rest of the video. So, thanks for watching. It's already 21 minutes. Oh my god, I didn't realize I was doing this long. Hopefully you watched the whole thing. So, subscribe to my channel if you'd like. And I'm going to be going to Canada very soon. So, you might not expect videos for kind of a okay i'm not talking like this so you might not expect videos for kind of like maybe like a week or two like i have camp this week so i'm probably not going to be making a video but i probably will maybe one and the week after that i'll be in canada montreal and so i probably won't be filming there but i might do a talk a video in the hotel that might be kind of fun so anyway keep checking the channel and if you subscribe, you'll automatically get the notifications. So that's just another good reason why you should probably subscribe. So, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to comment down what you think your intelligence is, and hopefully the tooth decay and butt chin, butt chin, cleft chin, informed you. So, thank you for watching. Have a good summer! Unless you're still in school, then that kind of sucks. Bye.